Welcome to the video series on algorithms. I'm David, an instructor at Grand Circus. Algorithms are essentially logical solutions to challenges we face every day in programming. This video series aims to give you tools for thinking through solutions and communicating about them with others. There are three main topics we will cover in this series. First, in this video, we will define what an algorithm is. We will also look at a couple standard ways of representing algorithms. Then, in the next two videos, we will look at some existing strategies and solutions for algorithms. Many of the challenges we face have been tackled before. We can learn from solutions others have found. And finally, in the last video, we will consider how to compare different choices you have when selecting an algorithm. Here's the breakdown for this video. We'll start by defining algorithm. Then we'll look at two ways of writing algorithms, flowchart and pseudocode. Then you'll have a chance to practice making a simple algorithm using these two techniques. Let's jump right in with the definition. An algorithm is a finite set of steps that expresses how a specific task should be done. Let's break that down. An algorithm is for a specific task. An algorithm is not an entire program. It's going to be focused on just one task in a program, such as calculating a total or finding the top rated blog posts. An algorithm is a set of steps. It outlines specific steps to take that will accomplish the task. These steps are not computer code themselves, like C++ or Python. Rather, an algorithm lays out steps in such a way that it can be taken and implemented in just about any language. You could say it's a higher level roadmap of the steps. Finite. Finally, the steps of an algorithm must be clear and complete so that they can be followed consistently to arrive at the desired result. There must always be a beginning and an end. For an example of an algorithm, we will look at the task of finding the largest of five positive numbers entered by a user. We will look at two ways to represent this algorithm, first with a flowchart and then with pseudocode. Here's a flowchart describing an algorithm to output the largest of five numbers entered by a user. The start and end of the flowchart are indicated using ovals. From the start, we move to the first step, which is to create a count variable and initialize it to zero. Then we initialize another max variable to zero. The next step in the sequence is a decision point, indicated by a diamond shape. From here, there are two possible paths. If the count is greater than five, we'll proceed to the right. Otherwise, we'll proceed downward. At this point, count is zero, so the next step is get a number from user. You'll notice this step is shaped like a trapezoid. This indicates an input step. Once the user has entered a number, the algorithm moves to another decision. If the user input is larger than the current max, move to the right, where we're instructed to replace the current max value with the user's input, and then proceed to increment count. If not, just proceed directly to increment count. The next step is to return to the count decision. This forms a loop, and the algorithm will continue getting numbers from the user and comparing them until it returns to this decision point a fifth time, and the count finally reaches five. At that point, we proceed to the right, output the max number we found, and the algorithm ends. Here is an overview of the symbols used in the previous flowchart. An oval terminator is used for the start and end of the program, a rectangular process is used for data manipulation or creating a variable. A trapezoid input indicates receiving input data, such as from a user. And a diamond-shaped decision indicates conditional logic and will have two or more options for the next direction to proceed. In a moment, we'll have you practice drawing a flowchart, but first, we'll introduce a second way to document an algorithm, pseudocode. Pseudocode is the steps of an algorithm written out in a simplified fake computer code. The form is the same as if you were writing code for a computer, but it's designed only for humans to read, so the rules aren't as strict. In fact, there are no rules to define pseudocode. Just write in a way that makes sense to you and others who will read it. One word of caution, though. 
Just because it's simpler doesn't mean it can be vague. You still need to specify every step with detail so that the algorithm gives one clear, fully fleshed out solution to the task. Here's an example of using pseudocode to describe the same algorithm of finding the largest positive number. The pseudocode reads from top to bottom, just like real code, but the statements are written in shorthand English. Note the use of indentation to show that these lines happen inside the loop. Indentation also indicates that this line is inside the if, and only happens if the input is greater than max. This is a common use of indentation in pseudocode. Output max then returns to the first level of indentation, indicating that it should happen only after the loop is finished repeating five times. Writing pseudocode for yourself is a wonderful strategy for stepping back from your code and thinking through a problem. It helps not to have to busy your mind with all the details of language syntax. Once you think you have an algorithm you want to try, converting from pseudocode to real code is easy. Let me demonstrate with a JavaScript implementation of this algorithm. First, write the pseudocode into the editor as comments. Then go through and write the actual code where it belongs between the comments. When you're done, you can delete all or some of the comments, or leave them if you find them helpful. I'm sure you can see how this same approach can be used with any language you're writing in. All right, now it's your turn to practice writing out an algorithm. Your task will be to make both a flowchart and pseudocode for an algorithm to find the average of 10 numbers entered by the user. For the first practice exercise, just make a flowchart. We'll do the pseudocode later. Here is the flowchart we made earlier for reference. Get out a piece of paper and sketch out a flowchart to get 10 numbers from the user and then output the average. The average is calculated by collecting the sum total of all the numbers as the user enters them, then at the end, divide by 10 to get the average. Pause the video now and take some time to make your flowchart. When you're done, resume the video and we'll show you an example solution that you can compare with yours. Here is an example of a flowchart for the algorithm to average 10 numbers. There are multiple variations of flowchart diagrams that would also be correct. Compare yours to this one and see if you think yours is correct. Pause the video now to study the solution before we move on. Now you'll practice the same algorithm with pseudocode. On a piece of paper or in a text editor, write out pseudocode to output the average of 10 numbers entered by the user. Here on the screen is the pseudocode example from our largest number algorithm for reference. Pause the video and finish your pseudocode. Then resume the video and we'll show our sample solution. Here's our sample pseudocode for finding the average of 10 numbers entered by a user. Again, there are multiple correct solutions to this. Just because yours does not look like this doesn't mean it's wrong. Pause the video now to study our solution and compare it with yours. That's all for this video. We learned that an algorithm is a finite set of steps that expresses how a specific task should be done. The steps are clear and complete, but are written in such a way that they can be implemented in different programming languages. We practiced two ways of representing algorithms, flowcharts and pseudocode. These methods can be helpful when thinking through a challenging solution. In the next video, we will look at some common types of algorithms and approaches you can take when solving difficult problems.